Welcome to today's program. I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh, and with me today is sex abuse attorney Jeff Herman, a nationally recognized trial lawyer and advocate for survivors of rape, sexual abuse, and sexual exploitation. Jeff's firm, Herman Law, is one of the nation's most prominent personal injury law firms, specializing in the representation of victims of sexual abuse in civil cases. Jeff, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Dr. Walsh. Based on your experience, who are the typical perpetrators? So, interesting. You know, if you, if you ask somebody, why do bank robbers rob banks? It's because that's where the money is. And so the same thing holds true for child predators. We find them where the kids are. Now, of course, there is a, a huge number of predators that are familial type of relationships and, and incest relationships, step parents, and that, that's really unfortunate. But the work that I do typically involves institutional defendants. And the institutions that I see most times are the Catholic Church, by far, other churches and temples, absolutely, there, there, there's predators there, schools, uh, Boy Scouts, uh, foster homes, orphanages, any place where there's kids, there's going to be predators. You know, and people ask me, well, you know, why so much in the Catholic Church? You know, why is that? And unfortunately, what we know is that this is not a new problem for the Catholic Church. And for decades, even hundreds of years, the church has known that priests were masquerading as men of God and using their position in the church to get access to kids and molest them. And part of the problem is that the church has always believed in this secrecy. And in fact, there's what they call canons of law, which are the guidelines the church follows that requires them, the church, to keep things secret. And so for a predator, it was a perfect place to go because if they, got, they had access to kids and if they got caught, they would be protected. And the church became a refuge because it was well known that the church was protecting predators. They were covering it up. They were sending them to different churches. And so there's a huge problem. Now, Jeff, when I hear you talking like this, it makes me wonder, are you attacking religions? Are you attacking specific churches? Right. I get that question a lot. What I'm doing is protecting children. I don't care what denomination the perp comes from. I don't care if it's a Catholic priest, a Buddhist priest, a Jewish rabbi. If they're molesting children, I'm coming after them. Well, you talk about religious institutions, but what about schools? I see this all the time in my experience. I get cases, unfortunately, way too often where there's a man working at a preschool or a daycare that's molested kids there. And I will tell you, it's almost always the man who's working there. In fact, when I get a case, it's usually the only man working at the preschool or the daycare. And so this is a real problem. And I think parents and institutions need to be more serious about protecting kids. If there's a man working in a preschool, I want to know why he's working there. And I want to make sure there are no red flags. And if there are, I want erring on the side of caution and that person removed. Too often, I get cases where there were warning signs and there were reports and the man was left in the preschool with these very vulnerable little kids. You know, Jeff, in cases that involve public or private entities like schools, religious institutions, or scouts, do they have liability for damages to these victims? Uh, yes, they do. And, and, and these cases are typically that I file or a negligence case. Um, and a negligence case is premised on the principle that if a school or a church or, or a, a youth league has a special relationship with your child, meaning they're participating, then the law says that they have a legal duty to protect your child from foreseeable harm. We like to say as lawyers that the institution knew or should have known that this man was unsafe to be around children. Um, unfortunately, I find that it's a very common denominator in all these abuse cases to see that this person, the predator, has crossed boundaries with children. A man that crosses boundaries is a man that may molest a child. I think the best way to protect kids is to expose predators and the institutions that enable them. 
Now, Jeff, I've been doing my research and I'm having a hard time getting my head around this particular stat. Is it true that hundreds or potentially thousands of priests have been identified as pedophiles in America? Yes, there are thousands of priests that have been accused of molesting children in the Catholic Church. It's an astounding number. But my understanding is, is that 80% of the victims have not yet even come forward. That means there's thousands and thousands more of priests who have never been identified because there was no way for these victims to expose them through the legal process. That's good to know. Now, I'm sure the information you provided today will be helpful to anyone who suffered sexual abuse or knows someone who has. Can you tell our viewers more about your particular firm and how you guys are different from other personal injury firms in the way specifically that you handle sexual abuse cases? Sure. I mean, all that we do are sex abuse cases. And so my whole firm is geared up to empowering victims and help, to help them heal. And that begins with the first phone call. And what I know the most important thing to do is when that person calls me is for me to listen and to help them tell their story and to receive that story in a positive way. I'll give you an example. Someone where I thought it was not handled correctly and they came to me is a person called me and they were upset and they had called another law firm and they were explaining their story and the response from the other firm was, well, why didn't you run? Why didn't you scream? <gasps> and of course, that's an inappropriate response and that's not understanding about why victims feel guilty and why they're compliant. Of course they don't scream and run, we know that. But th their story needs to be heard in a positive way and they need to be reassured that it's not their fault. And so the first thing is to listen and to help them tell their story. And by doing that, I think they begin to feel this, this sense of, of having a voice. Ultimately, that's what we want is to give them a voice. And so it begins there. Um, when we, when we file the cases and, and when we're proceeding with discovery, it's really important to understand that this is everything to our clients. This is their life. And so our job is to give them that security, to give them that empowerment. Um, and I think because that's all that we do at Herman Law is represent victims of sexual abuse, we help victims heal. And I will tell you, the best thing for me, I've been doing this a long time now, since 1997, is that every year I hear from victims um, mm -hmm. who are survivors, um, especially when they were kids and now they're adults. Either their parents call me or they'll send me an email and they're telling me how great things are for them. I have kids I represented who are now lawyers and doctors and therapists and, and just out there living happy and healthy lives. And their parents write me to thank me. And that's for me, that's everything. That's so rewarding, and that's why I love what I do. It sounds like the big reward. You know, if you or someone you love has suffered sexual abuse as a child, I want you to know that the attorneys at Herman Law are here to advocate for you. They dedicate 100% of their practice to representing survivors of child sex abuse in civil cases, and they've obtained hundreds of millions of dollars in verdicts and settlements in child sex abuse cases please call the number on your screen now. Remember, the consultation is completely confidential and it's free. Call Herman Law now.